Welcome to Learned in Go-Go, the podcast. Well, that was anticlimactic. It's hilarious. I've been having so much trouble with my theme song today, and I'm not sure why. So let's try that again. Welcome to Learned in Go-Go, the podcast. It is Wednesday night. I am your host, Sydney A. I am also the author of Everything I Need to Know, I Learned in Go-Go, How a Preacher's Daughter Pole Danced Her Way to Finding Her True Self. And I am super excited to get on here with you guys tonight. I can't wait to see who is going to hop in. It's so funny. Like I'm seeing things are really wonky today with my, uh, my StreamYard, the platform that I use. It's just acting funky today. So I apologize in advance if it's not doing what it's supposed to, but I am so excited that Kyler is here. Happy Wednesday, sweetie. I hope the haunt has been going great for you. Um, Kyler has been working at a haunt for Halloween, and I'm so excited for him. That is awesome. Um, super glad that you are joining me here tonight. As per usual, we have no no set schedule, no super duper concrete topics. We're just going to see where it goes. Um, so I hope you guys are having a fantastic week. I don't know if you can tell. I'm in a hoodie. The temperature here went from like 80 to 40 overnight. And I am a Sid sickle. Like I am so cold. I do not adjust well to the temperature dropping. I love fall. Like I love summer until summer's time is done. And then I love fall, but I need a little bit of an adjustment. I don't go from 80 to 40 well. Um, so if you see me like snuggling up, it's because I'm freaking freezing. But <laughs> I hope wherever you guys are, you are comfortable. Uh, let's see. It's been good so far. I get to do my own makeup now. Pretty cool. Are you um, like a specific type of creature? Are you a zombie, vampire, just like um, undead something? Or is it just gross? <laughs> like, do you have uh, anything like a specific type of character, I guess is what I'm asking you. Uh, but he says that they're going to be doing it three nights this week. Awesome. I need to go somewhere scary. Typically, my sister and I go to um, Great Adventure, which is like our local Six Flags. They have, I'm trying to think what it's called, um, Fright Fest. Fright Fest. Oh, yes, please send me a picture um, of your makeup. I would love to see it. But Fright Fest at Great Adventure is so much fun. Um, I also have another friend that is part of the haunt at Doherty Park. So it's really cool that all of the amusement parks like to take on the Halloween genre um, and do the different things for the holiday. But my sister took me to my first Fright Night. It's been around forever. But um, I went with her and I believe my brother. I forget who went the first year. But the, there was one guy that was just like kind of like a zombie in a military outfit. And he would just walk around and like look at you like completely stone faced. And then if you made eye contact with him, he'd just stare at you and then go, ha! and like scare the shit out of you. It was so funny. Like he was fantastic. He was so good at it. And there were of course scary clowns and zombies and they were dragging shovels, which is completely like, you don't think about the different noises that common things can make. And that's how Foley artists do what they do. But like in person, this person just dragging a shovel. It was so unsettling the noise that it made. And then they'd come by you and slam it on the ground and scare the poop out of you. But it's fun. That is what Halloween is about. Getting the poop scared out of you. And we also have um, Bates Motel nearby here. There's a couple different like Jason's Woods, I think it's called. 
And then in Jersey, there's Creamy Acres, which is really known for being super scary. My older brother's been there several times. And like I said, Fright Fest is a great adventure. Um, so if you have a scary place to go near you, put it in the comments. I'm trying to remember the name of the one in Delaware. If my sister hops on here, she'll be able to tell me. Uh, but my youngest likes to go there. And I can't remember the name of it right now. But it's another one where they have haunted hay rides and the haunted maze and all that kind of stuff. But like Creamy Acres goes above and beyond with the animatronics and like the different stuff. So it's really cool how they've like, they continue to evolve and add more stuff every year to like scare the bejesus out of you. <laughs> so again, if it's, um, Kyler, put in the comments where you are. So if people are nearby, they can come and support your place where you're doing the haunt. Um, and like I said, Craig's at Dorney Park. I don't know. I would assume Hershey Park would also do a Halloween thing that's near me. Uh, not near me, but like in my general vicinity. Um, so if you like to go to the haunted places for Halloween, put it in the comments. Another place I would love to go to that I have not yet is Eastern State Penitentiary, which is in Philadelphia. And it's an actual prison that's no longer, you know, used as that, but it's supposed to be haunted. But I want to go there when it's not Halloween. I don't want all the Halloweeny stuff. I want like the genuine haunted prison experience in like May. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so it's not getting, um, you know, amplified for the holiday. So, oh, awesome. Okay. So if you are near Creepy Hollow Scream Park, go and support Skull Maggot 99. Got to support our family here. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it's going to bug me. I can't think of the place in Delaware where my sister goes and my youngest. But anyway, like there's so many places around between corn mazes and haunted attractions. And then it seems like for Halloween, you know, like I would love to go to Salem, Massachusetts. I've never been. But the last thing I want to do is go mid-October because I guarantee you it's water wall people and, you know, like aggravating. But I would think they would start the spooky season early because it's Salem, Massachusetts. And so if I went, you know, second week of September, it would probably still be spooky season for Salem, Massachusetts. Have you guys been to Salem, Massachusetts? If you have, please put it in the comments and let me know, you know, is it cool? Is it overhyped? I'm trying to think of other like super scary places. I would assume New Orleans would be another place that's like super spooky times a hundred for Halloween because I've been there twice. Once was uh pre Katrina. And then the, the last time I went was 2000. I got to do some, some body math here. So summit was Nashville, Nashville. And then I think it was new Orleans after that. So it'd be like 2017 was the last time I was there. <gasps> Luna projects is here. Hey, sweetie. She said, never been to Massachusetts, would love to go. I've been to Boston and I've been to like other places in Massachusetts, but I've never been to Salem and I would love, love, love to go. Um, Kyler says, there's another haunt nearby that has more money in production, but they treat their haunters terribly. So we're not going to support that haunt. We are going to support Creepy Hollow Scream Park because that's where you are. So everybody can avoid that other place if they're not treating their haunters well, because everybody deserves to be treated correctly. Uh, let's see. Luna says, Boston is definitely a place I'd love to see with all its history. Same. I would love to go back. I went in high school. And when you go on a high school trip, you don't always take in everything that you should be taking in in the city where they send you. Um so I would love to go back as an adult and take in more of the history. I do remember they have, um, I forget what it's called, 
because French Quarter went in my head, but that's New Orleans. But it's like, I think it might have a similar name. And they had a lot of street performers and stuff like that. And that was really cool. But I don't remember the name of that. Um, so, oh, Kyler, feel better. And if you're not as chatty, that is perfectly. Everybody send good, good vibes to Kyler. Get better. Um, but Boston, I'm trying to remember specifics of being there. And all I remember is getting busted smoking by a teacher. And that has nothing to do with the history of the country. It was just <laughs> me getting in trouble on the chorus trip. Um, but yeah, like that's, you know, being as close to um, Philadelphia as I am, so much history there. And it's definitely worth taking the time to go there and do those types of things as much as they're, you know, like I like to go there for concerts and, you know, stuff like that too. Seeing the Betsy Ross house and like the Ben Franklin, like the ruins of where he lived. And um, there's an alley. Dang it. Let me see if I can look it up. Um, there was, uh, the heck is the name of it? Cause I'm going to think of something from Harry Potter instead of Philadelphia, but it's like, Efrit's Alley, maybe. Let me see, Alley, Philadelphia. Because um, when I went on my kids, yeah, Elfrit's Alley, I was correct. E L F R E T H. Elfrit's, that's hard to say, Elfrit's Alley. Um, the reason why that's so important is um, Elfrit's Alley is the longest running street in our country you know, aside from indigenous people, I'm sure they have places that have been inhabited longer, but that has been like a modern street that has had inhabitants for like however many hundreds of years. So the people that live there now are required to keep the front of their homes looking historical, like it's from 1500, 1600, whenever the alley was constructed. It's called Alfred's Alley Museum. And the cool thing um, about when I went with my youngest daughter was there was this little kitty cat. <laughs> and we were like, it's Alfred's Alley Cat. So we were like super excited about that. So quick thing, it's named for a blacksmith. I did not know that. Um, it was home to 18th century artisans and tradespeople who were the backbone of colonial Philadelphia. Over 300 years later, the historic 32 houses that line the street remain hot properties, and this itty-bitty cobblestone alley is a de designated National Historic Landmark. So if you ever go to Philly, you know, that's something kind of off the beaten path that you can go see. Oh, we have a new, new friend. Hi, Charles. Thank you for hopping on here. I hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, Luna says she doesn't know much about Boston. Um, if you're ever like, you know, Boston Tea Party, stuff like that, but uh, Liberty Bell is Philly, so you'll need to come to Philadelphia to see that. I have seen it several times. It never gets any more exciting. I know it's a historical thing, <clears throat> so for the historical value, you want to go and say you saw it, it's a bell with a crack in it. So if the line's that long, you're not really missing anything by skipping the Liberty Bell on the tour. I'm just going to tell you that because, you know, you got to go through security and all that. And then it's literally a bell with a crack in it. It's more fun to run up the museum steps and pretend you're Rocky. <laughs> you know, if you're ever in Philly, people say people in Philly hate that. And that's not true. It's like all part of the, the charm of the city. Um, <laughs> so Kyler says, if he ever goes to Philadelphia, he's going because it's always sunny in Philadelphia and he loves that show. That show is hilarious and I can take you to that bar. So if you're ever in Philly, you better let me know and I will show you around all y'all. Um, so there's like a lot of really cool things to do there. We were originally talking about um, haunted things and haunted attractions, like the different um, theme parks that do hauntings and different haunted things. So if you live near a place that's haunted, well, whether it's well known or not, you know, it doesn't have to be Bates Motel or, you know, like the Lizzie Borden house, which I believe is in Boston. Um, but if there's like, you know, little nanny Betty's house or something, tell us about it in the comments because 
We are full on in spooky season now, and I love spooky stories. So please, please, please share with us somewhere haunted that is near where you live. And you can make up a town name if you don't want people to have any idea where you live. That's that's cool, too. You know, I don't want to out anybody. Um, Luna Project says, Boston has a lot of history, though. I didn't know the JFK Museum and Library. I didn't either, but that makes sense that that would be there because they were so um, in Massachusetts. What is it? Kitty, Kitty Bunkport? Is that where the Kennedys are? Like up in the little part of Cape Cod all the way at the tippy tip, I think. Um, yeah, that family. <laughs> Let me just tell you, there's another podcast. It's called Behind the Bastard. I don't know if it's Bastards or Bastard. And they have a several episode segment about RFK Jr. I figured the Kennedys were probably fucked up because they are American royalty, which means they're most likely inbred in a little wacky doodle. I had no idea. So if you're into, you know, like learning about celebrities and their kookiness, I highly, highly recommend you check out this podcast because mouth agape. I had no idea. Um, that was just like cuckoo bananas. Uh, Kyler says my house is built over a revolutionary and civil war site. Really? Do you have ghosts? Like honest question. I'm not being a smart ass. That's wicked. And, uh, Luna project says there's a bunch of ghost tours here in Cincy. I have only been to Cincinnati once. And that was to like, seriously, like I got some chili and bolted. Um, but I would love to go on a ghost tour in Cincinnati. Uh, is it like a Native American ghosts or is it like criminals? Like what are the kind of ghosts that um, they have tours for in Cincy? Because I'm trying to think historically and I'm, I don't know of anything off the top of my head. Like, you know, it's a little far West, I would think, for something Civil War. Um, but I'm just, I'm curious. I love ghosty stuff. And I asked Kyler about ghosts. He says, not yet, but people have complained about seeing things walking the streets at night. So wicked. I love that. Um, yeah, pretty much. I figure if you were in America, there's going to be like indigenous people, past generations pissed at us fairly fairly. So if they're haunting us, that is their right, man. Um, but I love doing the ghost tours and stuff, but like, I don't have to, I've always been sensitive to that. Like there's a couple in my house, but they're, they're friendly. And, you know, I just kind of say hi and let them be. Um, if you've checked out my book, everything I need to know, I learned in GoGo, -Go, which you can get at learnedingogo.com. I talk about my years in college and we had a ghost in the dorm room there. Um, and there was another one in the dorm that wasn't in my room. So, you know, I've definitely had one-on-one -on -one experience with ghosts. Thankfully, nothing really terrifying because some of them can be really scary and dangerous. Uh, but there are always seems to be, you know, the, like the shadows you see out of the corner of your eye or like noises and stuff. Um, but certain places have a lot more of that energy than others. And especially this time of the year, you know, when the veil gets thinner, you can definitely have more experiences if you're sensitive to it. Some people don't believe, some people don't believe until they do, <laughs> you know, but I definitely am a believer and I've had my own experiences to back that up for myself. So uh, let's see. Kyler says living by the James River is also kind of spooky. I believe that rivers in general um, can have kind of a spooky vibe. People say they see ghost ships. So is the James River, I'm not familiar. Is that like, like a huge river like the Mississippi would be, or is it like, I live near the Delaware river. So up further North, it's kind of like an oversized Creek. And then when you get down South, it kind of opens up a little bit. Um, and then like the Susquehanna near here has some parts that are really big. 
but I know near Philly, it has a channel in it so that the barges and all can go through. Um, so I'm kind of picturing that when I picture ghost ships, like you would need, sorry, this is pissing me off. You would need, you know, like a deep river to have ghost ships in. Um, but that's really cool. So now I'm picturing like <laughs> the flying Dutchman from SpongeBob with his dining sock going down the James River. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm easily distracted. Um, okay, so it's a very big river. It was used during the wars as a supply line or battles. Interesting, because back then they had the big concrete ships, which still, I don't understand how a ship made out of concrete can float, but I know that scientifically it's possible. It just doesn't make sense to my mind, but... I'm not always a very scientifically minded person. So as long as it worked, uh, Luna project says Cincinnati music hall is haunted. Ooh. Arnold's bar and grill, which is an old restaurant here. Also spring Grove cemetery is supposed to be haunted as well as the Taft museum. Awesome. I'm guessing Taft meaning former president Taft, but that's cool. Cemeteries. I've always been drawn to. When I was little, um, my grandparents, both both sides of my grandparents were in the same town. So my parents went to school together from kindergarten through high school, but never dated until after they graduated from high school. But the town was literally Main Street, another street, and this street, and that was it. That was the entire town. And my one set of grandparents lived on Main Street, and then the other ones lived on that other little side thing. All that to say, there was a church. There was my mom's general store. I think that was all the businesses in town. So the church had a cemetery. And when my brothers and I were little, my mom would bring us to the cemetery to play because behind where the gravestones were was a big field. And you could cut through the cemetery to get to the playground by the school. There was a school there. Um, but we always wanted to play in the cemetery. And I was always fascinated to see the names and the dates and any information about them because some of those stones were hundreds of years old. And it always, like, even as a child, it made me feel so sad to see the tiny little stones because they were for the babies that passed. But we would play out behind the gravestones. There was a field and there it was full of daisies. So we would, like, pick the daisies and make, like, the daisy crowns, you know, and stuff like that. So to me, cemeteries were never scary. Um, even, you know, as a child and then getting older, I always had a sense of respect for the people that were resting there. Um, even if like, you know, my friends and I would hang out at this one cemetery in high school, but it was always, you didn't step on the graves. You didn't, you know, like we were very respectful about it. We just hung out there because it was quiet and nobody would bother us. But, um, you know, there's always been this kind of almost comforting energy in cemeteries to me. So when I hear there's a haunted cemetery, it's almost like, well, it's kind of sad in a way that somebody is not at peace. Because I think once you get to that plot of land, you should have some peace. Um, but I like I love the, the cemeteries in New Orleans with all the above ground graves because of the water table. They can't bury people there. Um, and there's so much history in those cemeteries that I love doing the cemetery tours there, uh, in particular, but any cemetery I've always felt kind of drawn to, if that makes sense. So Luna project says there's also underground tunnels, which were part of the Cincinnati subway system, which are haunted. That's badass. That would be fun actually. I would love to go. I don't know though, because I might get a little claustrophobic. Um, but let's see. Luna Project says, I didn't get a vibe in Spring Grove, but there are numerous times and it felt peaceful. Oh, you've been been at Spring Grove Cemetery. That's the haunted one, and it felt peaceful. I get that. I get that that same kind of energy. Did any of you grow up where there was a house that people would say was haunted or that like 
some witch or something lived there, but it was actually just like in a misunderstood older person in the house. I kind of feel like every town has one of those, like the witch's house or like the, you know, the somebody lives there that's going to do something mean to you. And honestly, they're not a bad person. They're just misunderstood or they're just like Squidward and they want to be left alone. Um, I don't think I had that where I grew up, but we had like an abandoned house that people would go and play in, which as an adult, I'm like, that's so dangerous because you can go through the floor. But as a kid, it's an adventure and you're going to explore and you're a wussy if you don't do it because your friends dare just to, <laughs> you know, we had like, I think it was in the middle of a field and you'd have to go like hike out to get to it. Um, and then they eventually tore it down because it was abandoned and all the neighborhood kids were playing in it. So for safety reasons, they tore it down. Um, let's see. Luna Project says we had one in Wisconsin called Summerwind. That's a pretty name. That's a very pretty name. Summerwind came blowing in. <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm excited about Halloween. I don't know about you guys, but I love Halloween. And I just got my decorations up in the last like week. And uh, my husband and I had a date day yesterday and we went to the local pumpkin patch and I bought a couple more decorations because this was the year where we bring all the, the bins down from the attic and I'm taking stuff out and it just disintegrates because I've had it for so many years and it's just done. So I, I got a couple more things this year to replace the things that had to be, um, you know, retired <laughs> from my decorations, but they were super cute. I've, I've got a few of them now. They're kind of like metal yard signs. So they last a little better. And one's like a ghost and like a little baby ghost. And then the other one looks like an oversized bottle cap and it's a bat. I did post them. I don't know if you guys saw them. So cute. Um, so do you guys like go all crazy decorating for Halloween? Are you just kind of like, I give out candy, but I don't decorate or are you like Halloween sucks and I don't like it. Um, so put that in the comments, how you feel about Halloween. If you go all out decorating, um, over the years, I've had everything from inflatables to doing all the outdoor lights to, um, you know, like my inside of my house, I take everything off of the fireplace mantle and replace it with Halloween decorations. I have, um, like the little chandelier over my table in my kitchen. I put this big spider on, you know, stuff like that. And, uh, I just love it. I love it. I love spooky season. Um, in the last 10 years, I started collecting sugar skulls, but like full size skeletons with the sugar skull decorations. And a couple of them are bride and groom. And I just, I think they're beautiful. I think the artwork is so pretty. And I do have some sugar skull things I leave out all year, but the ones that come out at Halloween are definitely bride and groom themed. Um, I just, I find them so pretty and I like having them out. And then I have... <laughs> I think it originally came out in the 80s in a McDonald's Happy Meal. It's a chicken McNugget, but it's a vampire. So he comes out every year. I didn't have him since the 80s. I found him at a flea market in the 90s, and he's missing his little, like, Eddie Munster hair. So he's a bald vampire, but he's still adorable, and he has to come out every Halloween. Um so let's see, is, is my wedding anniversary this month? No, it's a uh, June 1st. So that's not, uh, that's not me, but I love Halloween. Yeah. I don't even have my birthday. It's not even this month, but I, you know, October is super cool, cool month. I love the feeling in the air and the smell of the leaves and it's making Kyler sneeze. So bless you. <laughs> I hope you feel better, sweetie. It's probably from doing the haunts excuse me. But, um, yeah, there's a, oh, okay. So Luna says she's thinking it was October because I wore a, dre a red dress. Yes, I did. You got a good memory. Um, 
yeah, so since this wedding, you know, for Dave and I was our second for each of us. Um, I'm divorced and he lost his first wife. She was murdered by cancer. Uh, so since it was the second time around for each of us, we decided that we were just going to do it our way and to hell with tradition. So I wore a red dress. We got married in the backyard and I walked down the aisle to my way by Frank Sinatra. <laughs> and I like when we went back and we watched our wedding video, the ceremony from start to finish was six minutes long. Like we rivaled soap operas. We were just like, let's get to it. You know? And then our reception, we hired our favorite local bands and like, we didn't have a cake. We didn't do the special dances. We didn't do a garter toss. We didn't do a flower. Toss. It was a party. So, you know, you've got a very good memory, Luna projects. Yes, I did. I did wear red because I figured why not, you know, it was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, so that was that was six years ago already, which is craziness. Um, yeah, but it was a, just a really fun time and everything we wanted it to be. So, yep, and she said, and that's what it should be. Absolutely. And that's, you know, with a lot of things in life, you might feel like you're tied down to tradition, to other people's expectations. Um, and don't lose yourself in that. It doesn't have to be a wedding. It could be, you know, I hate when I see parents that pop out a kid and are like, he's going to be a doctor. Like, let the kid get out of diapers first and then let them decide what path they want to take. You know, like maybe they would have an interest in that. But if not, don't force them to live your reality, you know, and that's true with all kinds of parts of our lives. Like at the end of the day, we get one go around. So wring out every ounce of happiness and, you know, like pride in yourself and experience that you can, because no one wants to go to the grave shouldn't all over themselves. You know, oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. No, don't should all over yourself. Go do the thing. Because even if you do it and you suck at it, at least you can say you did it. You know, you either succeed or you learn. There is no such thing as failure. So go out and experience this world and, you know, like learn as much as you can. Don't ever stop learning. Always be teachable. No one in this world knows everything. So go out and collect experiences because that's what makes your life more full. Uh, let's see. Luna Project says, I always wanted to wear a pretty dress, not necessarily church. And I don't know, just different quaint and then a party. Got to have a party with close friends, not the relatives you don't get along with. Yep. Absolutely true. And Kyler says, be happy, be supportive like me. Wear no skin. Wear no skin. You have to explain to me what that means. Like no, like... I don't know what that means. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yes, definitely pick and choose who you give your energy to. Like Luna Project says about relatives you don't get along with. There's family and then there's blood. And they don't always coincide. Um, so, you know, just because someone shares your bloodline doesn't mean they share your values or share what is best for you in your life. So, you know, definitely, I always try to be respectful, but that doesn't mean that you have to include everyone in every part of your life, because some people are only destined to share certain experiences with you, and some people are destined to share all of them, if that makes sense. Oh, like a skeleton. Okay. Gotcha. Be supportive. Oh, I see. <laughs> I see what you're saying there. Gotcha. And Luna says, at one point, though, I wanted a Halloween wedding. I know a couple of friends that did it, and it was cool. Yep, I do, too. And I've seen Halloween weddings where people get dressed up, and I see Halloween weddings where people do maybe like an orange and black theme, but it's still traditional other than that. And you need to be very specific in your invitations so that people know what to expect. So if you're having a traditional wedding with orange and black accents, no one comes dressed like a pickle. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, I thought it was a costume wedding because it's Halloween. So Luna says, I'm an only child, but my best friend is my sister from another mister. Damn straight. That is chosen family. And that is so important and so magical. Um, you know, I'm lucky. My family is great. And I know not everyone is as lucky as I am. Like my brothers and my sister and I like get along so great. My parents are awesome. Like I'm very lucky because I know a lot of people don't have that. Um, but my chosen family, all of you guys out there in the comments and my besties and all like you guys are fantastic. I love you guys so much. And I'm so grateful that you're in my life because you are my family. You know, um, I was talking earlier with a friend and I was saying about, I know a lot of you guys also are friends with Johnny. I know he's working. He can't come on here tonight, but through him, I've met this whole community of people that I didn't know until this year. And I say, all you guys are my family. I didn't know I needed. And it's so true. You come here every Wednesday with me. You support me. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm having a good time. I'm talking with my family, you know, and that's what is so important to me every Wednesday that I see you guys and I look forward to it. And it just is such a boost to my soul. And it brings me so much happiness every Wednesday. And I love you guys. And I want to thank you again for showing up and hanging out with me for a little bit of time every week, because I have so much fun. I've been listening to the spooky playlist all week. Um, I don't know if you guys have added anything more to it. If you weren't on here last week, definitely go back to the post from last week's podcast, because we are creating a spooky song playlist for a spooky season. Um, so it's been a lot of fun listening to those. I was going to tell you too, um, Lunar Projects, there's a song by King Diamond called Halloween I was listening to. I know we added Abigail to the list, but I don't think we added Halloween yet. So that's one I want to remember to add to it. Uh, let's see. She said, I'm curious about our beginning. I want to say you sought me out way before learning go-go because we share a common friend, Mika. Yes, we've been friends long before um, learning go-go. And I don't know exactly how long. And I don't honestly remember our origin story. But I know like we've been friends for a while and I love you. So thank you for, thank you for being a friend. I was actually watching the Golden Girls before I came back here. Oh, <laughs> love you, Kyler. Thank you. And uh, yeah, you guys rock. And I'm very grateful. Um, let's see, you were in Austin then when we met. I do remember that. I don't know why I remember that. But there was a time where I was reaching out to a lot of people um, that we I either had in common with other friends or um, when I started, I need a little sip, I'm sorry. Talking so much, my mouth dries up. So when I started with the uh, company that, you know, I do their home workouts and stuff like that, I've been for over 10 years. When I started being a coach with them, they were encouraging us to find like Facebook pages and things that were hobbies that you had or interests that you had. And back in 2014, excuse me, you could actually go and like, now that I think about it, it kind of blows my mind that this is the way that things were. But if you went to a Facebook page, you could click on the members and just like message them. Like it would just tell you their information, which is kind of like scary that you had all that at your fingertips. Um, but I would message people that were on the Rocky Horror Picture Show page and I would just be like, hey, who's your favorite character? You know, like the things that if I got a message, I would tell somebody to go scratch their ass. But I had people actually answering me and then like I would get to know them and then through them, I would get to know their friends and stuff like that. So I was growing my, my friends list, but as many people as just kind of like, I added as a friend and then like never really talked to for every one of those, there was awesome people that I connected with that I became friends with. And some like Luna projects, I'm not sure that that's how we met, but um, you know, like probably through a mutual friend, like you said, and then, you know, we actually have so much in common and like became friends because of that. So for that, I'm grateful, you know, like sometimes I'll have, 
people that show up in your birthdays. You ever have somebody on your Facebook birthdays and you're like, who the hell, who is that person? <laughs> you know, and I, I wish them a happy birthday because why not? But I'm just like, how'd you get on my friends list? Who are you? I don't know you. Um, and another thing that I've been doing is, and it, it's going to sound mean when I say it, but when I go to birthdays, because I do every day to wish my Facebook friends a happy birthday. But then if I see things about the person that they're posting that are completely against my core values as a person, I delete them on their birthday. <laughs> because I didn't know you and you're not aligned with my belief system. We'll put it that way. Um, but most of the time, it's just like, happy birthday. And then it's very sad, though, when someone comes up with the birthdays and then you realize that they passed away because that happens a lot. So especially the older I get. And I'm just like, man, that's a bummer. But um, let's see. Luna Project says, I don't know if I even had the page. I know I started while I was in Texas. Maybe I had like 2013. Maybe I started the page when I wanted to put together all my photography and art. Okay. That's cool. And she says, thankfully I haven't been severed. <laughs> so like what, like deleted? No way. I love you. You're not going anywhere. You're stuck with me like Velcro. Um, and she does challenge things with her writing. You're always doing challenge things. You're doing your song challenge right now. Um, which is super cool. And uh, I need to do more, more new writing now. Um, I still journal, but I don't journal every day. I need to get back into that for my mental health. It helps. Um, but I haven't been making the time my fault. I can't blame it on anything else because I'm not making the time. Um, and I have a couple of writing projects that I do want to get started and sometimes with a lot of things in life, that's the hardest part is that first step. Once you take that first step, things kind of fall into place. But a lot of us like to sit here and come up with every excuse why we can't make that first step. You know, like why it's scary, why it's never going to work, why blah, 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 all the excuses. Take the step. And I'm saying that to myself as well as everyone that's listening. Um, because again, you're going to succeed or you're going to learn. There's no such thing as failure. As long as we're above ground, we haven't quit. Um, so I need to get back on track with that. Uh, let's see. Uh, she said she wrote a little last night. Hadn't touched Dexter's daily quotes, but I did one last night. Yay. Awesome. Uh, feel free to put your page or, you know, where people can find your stuff in the comments. And that's for all of you guys. If you have something to promote, if you have somewhere people can come and see your projects, if you have a Facebook page, if you have a website, you can always give yourself a shout out in my comments. That's what this is about. We're all here to lift each other up. You guys know I say it all the time. When the tide comes in, all ships rise. So let's all support each other because it's just going to make everything better for everybody. Okay, so her uh, Dexter's Daily Quotes are on her, her page, which is called The Luna Projects. So everybody go follow The Luna Projects and support her because she's awesome. Um, yeah, I totally had a brain fart where I was going with that. <laughs> you guys know me. My train crashes more than not. talking about writing. We were talking about, um, let me get back in the comments and see if I can figure out what we were talking about. Love you guys. Definitely talking about that meeting people on Facebook. Um, yeah, because that's the other thing with definitely, um, supporting each other. And right now, everybody, please say good night to Tyler. You get some rest and you get better, sweetie. Um, and we'll talk to you soon. And Luna asks if I self-published. I absolutely did. And I will tell you why. <laughs> so when I wrote my book, I originally wanted to traditionally publish because my dream is to be a New York Times bestselling author. And they do not give that to self-published books, as far as I know, unless the rules have changed. So I was all about wanting that recognition. That was my dream. 
And so I set out with my book with that goal in mind. Then I read about the difference between traditional publishing and self-publishing and the percentage of profits you receive in each of those things. Um, so from what I learned, and this is only my experience, I could have been reading the wrong articles, I don't know. But from what I discovered, traditional publishing, you get four to eight percent of the publishing profits. The rest goes to the publishing house. And then with self-publishing, depending on if it's an ebook or a paperback book, the percentage is much, much higher. So then I thought, well, yeah, but the the publishing house will promote it and they'll do that. They don't do that unless you're a celebrity. Like if you're Joe Schmo publishing, they don't do anything extra to help you get it out there. You still have to do all the work and you get less of the, um, the profits. So that's why I was like, you know what, rather than wasting time peddling my book to publishing houses, I will publish it myself and I will, you know, get more of, excuse me, the profits from my book. So I hope to one day make back the cost of creating my book. Um, but I have sold many copies and I very, very much appreciate all of you who have gotten a copy and you guys rock. And I do love my little design for with the spin publishing is my publishing house. So that is awesome. And it's got the little, little spinny girl on there. Um, so you know, and like I said, it took me four years to write the book. I've only had it out less than two years. So I'm definitely going to keep grinding and getting it out there and doing, you know, as many things as I can to do it. I'm the guerrilla marketing queen. Like I leave my business cards anytime I'm at a rest stop, concerts, they're in the ladies room on the toilet paper holder, because you know what women, when we're sitting in there and we're bored, there's a little QR code, you're going to get nosy and you're going to scan it. So it's in there, <laughs> you know, like stuff like that. Um, and I do want to find out more about how to get into a book show. There was one I went to or a book fair I went to last year and I talked to somebody and I told them, you know, I really want to be like, have a table next year. Let me know, you know, that kind of thing. And then they never reached out and I found out it was last week, but I never saw anything about it to reach out to ask. Um, and my fault for not being a pain in the guy's ass, I should have been. But stuff like that, I want to do more book fairs. I want to do, you know, like if a con is appropriate, whether it's Comic-Con, Horror Con, whatever, if I could have a little space to sell books, I would absolutely do that. Um, and uh, Luna Project says I'd get stickers. So stickers are tricky. I did have some, but you can get in trouble depending on where you put them. And because it's a QR code that leads directly back to me, I could get in trouble. Um, yep, exactly with the QR, QR code and stick it wherever. So I have a QR code on the back of my truck on the window and it just says scan me with the QR code. And I've had, I've had some bites on that because people get nosy and I bank on people being nosy, but yeah, my business card has the QR code on it. So, um, you know, like people can just scan it and I'm going to be doing, it's called Crickwooder art show Friday. So two days from now, it's in media Pennsylvania and it is at, I want to look it up. So I don't say the wrong hotel because it starts with an H, but I don't remember. I want to say it's Hampton, not Hilton. Let me look it up, but it's K-R-I, I'm sorry, C-R-I-K-W-O-O-D-E-R -O -O -E art show, Hampton Inn and Suites in Media PA. So I will be there Friday from four to eight. If you're in the area, please come see me and uh, I'll be doing, you know, like meet and greets and handing out business cards. I always have books in my truck. So if you haven't gotten a copy yet, you want to come get a signed copy directly from me. That'd be awesome. Um, Okay, Luna says, you know what doesn't hurt? Tell me, I want to know. I want to know. Um, the other thing Friday is like a lot of the people there are going to be cosplaying and I still only have Lois Lane and April O'Neil as cosplaying outfits. So I don't want to do that again, but I'm going to do a spooky themed outfit. So um, 
there's a, you know, like this, it's really cool. It's like a velvet kind of hooded robe, John, that I've had for years and I'm like doing the whole thing with it. So if you're not in the media PA area, you know, I'll be posting pictures. See, okay. Luna projects and I share a brain because she said, just an idea. Do you have a QR code on your bookmark? I'd tack them to random boards. I do. I don't have a bookmark in my pull cast room right now, but both the old version and the new version have, um, have a QR code on it. I have put it up in Starbucks because Starbucks has a lot of community bulletin boards. I've done grocery stores. There's a local farmer's market near me that has a big community board. I go every couple of weeks to make sure it's still on there. Um, and it's so funny because I like, I'll see it and then I'll see like Girl Scouts selling cookies. And I'm like, just imagining them asking their leaders, what's, what is she doing? You know, like, cause it's got the, <laughs> the book cover on it. Um, but that's another thing like I've left on like the PA Turnpike rest stops where they have the things with like the local maps. If there's an empty one, I'll stick one in there, <laughs> you know, something like that. And I've been using the, the business cards instead because they have the same QR code. But when I went to do a Comic-Con last year, I don't know if I ordered 500 or a thousand business cards. I don't know who I thought was going to be like, I, I thought I was meeting the crowd at Live Aid, I guess. I don't know why I thought I needed so many business cards. So those, you know, because they were cheaper to buy, um, I've been using instead of the bookmarks, just cost effectiveness, but where the bookmark catches your eye more, I will use that instead. Um, so let's see, she says, schools or public places which have boards to post about your band or whatever. Um, Oh yeah, I will definitely send some to you to put up. Thank you. That would be awesome. I sent some with my cousin. Yeah, popular and Cincy. That would be fantastic. Thank you. I definitely will. Um, DM me your address and I'll send you send you a bunch. Um, when my cousin moved out to New Mexico, I gave her a couple of my stickers and like some bookmarks and also Cadillac Ranch had my QR code. I don't know if it got covered up by now but I know I had a QR code at a Cadillac ranch, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to think where else I've left them. But like I said, I always try to use the cards instead of a sticker because you don't want to get in trouble for vandalizing. Uh, yep. You're right. I should have it. You are correct. Um, and thank you again for buying my book, <laughs> but it's interesting to see how many places I can put them like in when I went to a couple different concerts, I left them all over the venue, um, you know, and stuff like that. And then I have the website for the QR code so I can see how many scans it has and where it's been scanned. So I love that too, because I love data and I love seeing stuff like that. So I'm kind of like, Oh, I made it too, you know, whatever. But when I was with the, uh, you know, like coaching for the fitness company, which is no longer a thing, the coaching, not the company, uh, we had a yearly convention. And so when I went to San Antonio a couple of years ago, I was leaving bookmarks all over San Antonio. <laughs> so that was pretty cool too. Um, but it's just, it's hard. You know, there's so many things hitting all of us constantly, you know, so you need to come up with a way to stand out in people's news feeds or stand out in their daily, you know, like hustle with what they're doing. Um, so that was kind of like something that I came up with and, you know, has it sold a million books? No, but I'm sure that I've gotten some sales I never would have if I didn't do that. And I'm just trying to come up with something creative. And that's all any of us can do is find a way to stand out in all of the white noise because there's just so many things just like hitting us from every angle. And every time you think you find a way to avoid the unwanted thing, they, they start adding it somewhere else. Like I'm sure you guys have it too, like in your social media messages. Now there's ads. Why? Why? <laughs> I have enough ads in the newsfeed. I don't need it in my messages too. And it's always stuff like today was like, do you have a tragic birth story that you can sue over or something like What? How did you pick me for that one? Like how, 
you may as well be like, do you have, you know, do you need your penis enlarged? Like it has nothing to do with me. Stop, go away. Like I don't, at least if it's a targeted ad, it's kind of like, I might think about it for a second, but some of this stuff is just way out of left field and just completely inappropriate to be hitting people with. So <laughs> Luna Project says, yeah, because I'm not giving away my bookmark. No, you better not. Um, is yours the same on both sides or do you have the newer one? Um, the newer one's got two different things on it. That's all I'm going to say about that because... I'm just curious because I think you might have ordered it before I got the new bookmarks made. And I love that you have been clever with posts. Thank you. I'm trying. Like sometimes the inspiration hits me and then I just like go with it. And I just like listening to that little voice of inspiration. One of my positive affirmations has to do with inspiration and the, the picture on it. If you guys aren't familiar, I do daily positive affirmations on my Instagram page that is at Learned in Go -Go, and on my Facebook page that's just Sydney, S-Y-D-N-E-E. -E. Um, they get posted in there and on my TikTok, which I think is Sydney author. So I couldn't have made it any more complicated to find. Um, but I use these cards. They're called Affirmators. And one of my dear Facebook friends sent them to me as a gift a few years ago. And that's why I use them. I'm not affiliate. I don't get a kickback from it. I just think they're really cute. Um, and the one card is inspiration. And it talks about you get a little voice in your head that starts out as a whisper. But pretty soon it's going to be James Earl Jones with a megaphone. And I pulled that card the one day. And then a couple hours later, it was announced that James Earl Jones had passed away. And I always like thought that was really kind of freaky that that was the card that I picked because I always just shuffle the cards and blindly pick one, you know, and it happened to be that card. Um, so that's really how I'm doing all of this is just listening to that little voice in my head and, uh, you know, like following what it's saying, because I believe that it's all there for guidance. Um, oh, thank you for sending me a pic. So I think you have the original bookmark. So I will send you an updated one too. That's why I was asking. I want to make sure you have the updated one. Um, I think you have one of the original originals actually, because if it's blank on one side, that was the first batch of them that I got. So you have the vintage bookmark. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, all that to say, if you guys are feeling this little voice in your head that's like guiding you, listen to it. You know, like that little bit of inspiration can lead you to a whole new place in your life that's so super cool and you never would have seen coming. Like that was what happened to me with um, the book and now the podcasts and the movie parts I'm having. Like I didn't see any of this a couple of years ago and it's just all been following my intuition and my inspiration. And it's there for a reason. Um, you know, and especially if you think you're getting a message and you poo poo on it and you keep poo pooing on it and it gets louder and louder and louder. It's like, Hey, Hey, <laughs> trying to tell you something, listen up, you know, it's there for a reason. So give it a listen. Okay. She said, I bought mine as soon as you posted, you were selling it. Thank you. I thought so. I thought you were one of my, my very first and I appreciate it so much. I am going to wrap this up guys, but I love you so much. And I love our time together every Wednesday. Um, definitely. If you have haunted places near you, put it in the comments. If you have something to shout out and promote for yourself, put it in the comments. We are all here to help each other out and to get everybody into a better vibration, a better place. And you guys do that for me every Wednesday, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. Uh, definitely, if you haven't already, you have to check out our spooky song list, which Luna Projects has so graciously gotten together for us on her YouTube. Um, so definitely check that out too. And feel free to share pictures of your Halloween decorations, of all that stuff. I love it, and I love you guys. And always remember that when life is throwing stuff at you, you have to hit it head on because when you think you're sticking your head in this hand and hiding, the rest of the world just sees a big ass.
Love you.